Hey, God bless you guys. Welcome back. It is Saturday again. We're here with another worship session, and we're happy that you guys were able to take some time out and join us today. Or if you're watching this later on, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, just make sure before we finish this, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and share. We want to reach out as many people as possible. Uh, this word is not just for the home church, but for everyone around us. So uh, make sure you go ahead and uh, share that video, send a link, hit all your friends, message them, do all that good stuff, uh, support the church, and uh, let's get to today's lesson, all right? Boom. All right, so today's lesson, uh, I want to go ahead and read off of Mark chapter 12, verses 30, and it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Now, pay attention to this, right? He's asking for four things here. He's asking to love him with your heart, with your soul, with your mind, and with your strength. And the thing is, he's asking for all. If you read on every verb, on every word, he says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. God wants all of you. God doesn't want just part of your life. He doesn't want just part of your heart. He doesn't want part of your soul. He's asking for everything. And God is not interested in the last minute things. He's not interested in just giving him your leftover stuff. He's not asking you for leftover time in the day. You know, he wants you to, when you do these things, he wants you to do it with all of it. And he wants you to do them intentionally. Okay? He desires your full devotion and not just bits and pieces of your life. And in the Bible, there's a, a Samaritan woman who once tried to debate Jesus on what is the best time or best place and, or style of worship. And Jesus replied to her and said that all these things are irrelevant. Where you worship is not as important as why you worship and how much of yourself you offer to God in your worship. You know, there is a right way and there is a wrong way to worship. And the Bible says that let us be grateful and worship God in a way that will please him. The kind of worship that pleases God has different characteristics. And it says it right there in the verse that we just read. And I'm going to go ahead and break these down. Like I said, this may be a two-part series depending on how it goes. But we're going to do it anyways. So God is the characteristic number one. God is pleased when, you wor when your worship is accurate. Okay. And the thing is that a lot of people sometimes, you hear them say all the time, I like to think of God as, and then they'll go ahead and fill in their idea of who they think, you know, God is or the God that they would like to worship, right? Uh, but we cannot just create our own comfortable image of who God is and whatnot, because and then just worship that. Because at the end of the day, that's creating a, a false image, it's creating a false idol. And when you worship that idol, that's it's idolatry, right? So, you know, the whole idea of what you perceive of who God is and your own thought and your own idea of what God is, is, is wrong. The, the Bible specifically says who he is, the type of person he is. Um, so when you worship, your worship has to be accurate. Worship must be based on the truth of scripture and not your own opinions about God. Jesus told the Samaritan woman, True worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Okay, so well, when we talk about worship in spirit and in truth, okay, the truth portion is what we read and what we know God in Scripture, okay, and how He's revealed to us in the Bible, and then the the, the in spirit, okay. Let's talk about that real quick. The, when it says to worship God in the spirit and truth, the spirit portion was not referring to the Holy Spirit, okay? What the what the spirit was referring to was your spirit, okay, your soul. To worship the Lord within your spirit, okay? Because God created that in order for you to actually respond to him, to God's spirit, okay? Um, but yeah, so second point, God is pleased when our worship is authentic, Okay, when Jesus said, love God with all your heart and all your soul, he meant that worship must be genuine and must be heartfelt. Okay, it shouldn't be fake. It shouldn't be anything that should have been pushed or anything like that. It has to come from the heart. 
Okay, it's not a matter of just saying the right things or the right words. You know, you must mean what you say. Heartless praise is not a praise at all. You know, it's it's empty, it's worthless, okay? God doesn't like that. When we worship God, uh, God looks past our words, okay? He doesn't care about what, you know, the fanciness of your, of your prayer or the, what you're saying. He, God looks past your words and looks at the attitude of your heart, okay? And the Bible says, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart, okay? So again, when we're praying, you know, you must be intentional. You must be heartfelt with, with your prayers. And since your worship involves in delighting in God, it engages your emotions, right? It starts tugging at your heart. And God gave you those emotions so you can worship him with deep feeling, okay? But those emotions must be genuine, okay? They can't be fake, you know? And you're going to see it all over the place, you know? And that's why you got to really read the Bible. You got to study it to understand the differences when it's emotion because it's truly heartfelt or with it's emotion because it's just, you know, fade off based off of just knowledge or based off of just the room and you're just trying to fit in, okay? Don't, no, don't do that. Stop it. God just wants your honest love, right? He just wants you to be sincere. You know, we can worship God being imperfect, but we cannot worship God being sincere, okay? So be true to your worship. Be true to God. Um, this is going to end this portion of the segment, okay? We got two more things that we're going to go ahead and bring about on next week's topic. But I just wanted to share these things with you because I think it's important for us to be intentional and know why we're worshiping and make sure that we're not worshiping the wrong way. You know, sometimes we've been taught, you know, bad habits when it came to doing certain stuff. Uh, and we just want to make sure that we can help guide and correct you or help you if you don't know um, how to worship. So uh, stay tuned for next week. We're going to go ahead and continue talking, you know, about the rest of your body and, and your soul and your mind, and your strength, all that good stuff. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my wife. I'm going to go ahead and go into worship now. But thank you again for listening. Thank you again uh, for you guys for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right. God bless you guys.
Thanks for watching. We have videos coming out every single day. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Join the conversation and leave questions and comments below. If you want to know more about GSM, check out our website in the description. Thank you and God bless.